You goes out of commission. Adam, I ran away. Where is this going? Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Season 4, Episode 4 of Wack Fu. And yeah, things are getting pretty interesting because we're starting to see kind of glimpses at what kind of villain the goddess of the Eliotropes is. She's not a villain villain. She's not evil, she's not like, she, do she doesn't seem to have ill will. Her, her reasoning for doing what she's doing, and we're only getting glimpses and, and ideas of what she's doing right now, but she seems to want to create a world of peace and love. Um, but the way she's going about it is very dystopian and, you know, fucked up. And just the fact that she had to basically put Hugo into a slumber because she knows he wouldn't uh, stand for this kind of thing. Yeah, it says a lot. Meanwhile, we got this other villain, this uh, assassin, who has escaped from his prison. <laughs> escaped, I mean, he just kind of walked out. He has reclaimed his bow now. And I don't know exactly what his goal is here, like where he's going, who he's going after, etc., etc. But he's apparently killed royalty. And when I think of royalty, I think of the Sadida kingdom. I think of Amalia. I think of her brother. It's like, is he going to go after them? I don't know. I mean, we're, we've started to see what kind of everybody's doing now that they've been separated again. Ruel's continuing to make mistakes. Amalia is, you know, finding out about and dealing with the death of her father. Ava, Tristapin, and their family are dealing with a new house guest and being very, you know, sundere about him. <laughs> Which, mind you, fair who isn't exactly the most uh, exciting of house guests for them to have right now, but I, I, I don't know if we can trust him or not. I, I genuinely don't know. So it's going to be interesting to see how things go with that. Um, and I wonder, like, are we not going to see Adamai again until, like, near the end of the season? Is he going to be, like, one of those characters that's like, oh, he ran away early on, and then at the very end of the season, he comes in clutch when he's needed. Is it, is it going to be that kind of situation? I guess we'll find out. Um, in the meantime, though, like, there's a lot of setup for this so far. And I'm very excited to see what happens next. So, let's just get into this and hope for the best. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with uh, spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. We've got, like, fucking zombie White Walker horror things now. Where the fuck did this come from? Uh, we already have the Iliotrope goddess, who is unintentionally a villain. Um, we have this assassin, who I guess is heading towards uh, the Tristapin household. For what reason? Who fucking knows? And now fucking zombie creatures. W what? Uh... There's only, like, what, 12, 13 episodes this season? What the hell are we building towards here? Like, does this... Like, don't get me wrong. I trust that this is going to, like, connect things well. I, I trust in Wakfu. I trust in Ankama that they're going to connect things well here. But... Where the fuck did this come from? Like, this is episode four, and it just out of nowhere, it's like, I thought I knew where this season was going, or at least had an idea. 
even if I didn't know exactly. But now you bring in a completely out of left field edition that's just like, excuse me the fuck? Like, You know what these things kind of reminded me of instantly when I saw them? Like, more than, like, just zombies and White Walkers and all? When The very f moment they first appeared here at, near the end of this episode, the very first thing I thought of was the apathy from Ruby, Volume 6. And I want to specify that that is a very good thing. If you don't know Ruby, um, I really want to specify that the Apathy are my favorite Grimm in all of Ruby. They are just so genuinely scary. So fucking freaky. Um, but instead of, like, sapping away your will to live, or do really much of anything, like the Apathy... These creatures just suck out your fucking life through your face. It's like, it's like the apathy mixed with, I don't, I don't know, Android 19 from, um, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I, I don't know why that's specifically what I thought of, but it is. It's just like, oh my god. That's fucking badass. I love this shit. I, I've talked about it before, but one of my favorite things in animation is when an animated series that is not horror-themed suddenly introduces an episode or a plot point or something like that that is very actively horror. Um, some of my favorite examples are Abracadaver from the Powerpuff Girls. That episode freaked me the fuck out as a kid. Um, Jack in the Haunted House from Samurai Jack is amazing. Stuff like that. You know, where the show itself is not like a horror show. But it, it has episodes or whatnot that do dive into horror. I'm not talking about stuff like Courage the Cowardly Dog that is horror themed. I'm talking about stuff that normally isn't. That suddenly brings that in. And this this is definitely another one of those examples now. We could definitely include this. <laughs> Because, my God, that came out of nowhere, and it was freaky in the best way. Like, Jesus, that came out of nowhere. Um, but there's other stuff to talk about. Let me let me talk about Ruel real quick. Um, Ruel is getting on my nerves. And here's the thing. I have heard people say before that they don't like Ruel, and I understand why. I've always understood why people don't like him. But he never really bothered me because it always felt like he had a character arc, and that was the point. And last season, I felt like that character arc was has had been coming to a head with, you know, Arpagone and everything uh, coming into play. And now he's reverted. In this season, he, had, he, he just completely missed the point and reverted back to his old self... And is just showing such insane selfishness and greed here. And it's just like... He learned why his greed cost him his wife in the first place. And now he's just like, you know, pissed off because she tried to make right on that? I, I'm sorry, I'm getting fucking annoyed with him. He's honestly pissing me off. I'm, I'm not okay with the way he's acting. And I mean, I, I assume and I hope that that's the point. And I assume that that's going to lead into him, you know, having to get this lesson probably literally beaten into him. But it is just irritating the shit out of me like you wouldn't believe. And the fact that it's actively a part of each episode, it's not, it's not like a small plot point. It is actively his major plot point right now. So it's not just something I can ignore. We also had Tristapin and Ava's family and, you know, just doing some training and shit. 
But like I said, uh, Madagascan is on his way to them, and it's just like, oh, that's c probably concerning. Why is he going towards them? Is it because, you know, Iliotro or not Iliotrope, Eop God and all? Is that his goal here? Or is he actually going to be surprisingly on their side? That would be a twist. But the meat of this episode, of course, comes from the main, main story. The stuff with the Eliotrope goddess, Yugo, and the council of royalty here. The royal council that comes together under Joris to discuss what's going on in the World of Twelve at the moment. So we find out that Yugo hasn't been actually put into a... <coughs> Excuse me. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. We find out Yugo hasn't actually been put into a permanent or even semi-permanent sleep. It was just a rest in order to regain his strength after everything that had happened. So I did get proven wrong there. I, I, I assumed that there was, I, I guess you could say, more nefarious intent there. But no, it was just healing. But because of this, Yugo has seen that the Iliotrope goddess truly is love incarnate. That she does harbor no ill will. That she has no hatred, no anger, no bitterness, nothing like that. No, None of those negative emotions in her. And that, I feel, is pretty obvious. Like I've, like I've been saying, she's a villain not because of her, 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 how do I put this? Her motives, her motivations and everything. But because that what she is doing is just wrong. And it's it's not uh, it's not evil, it's just it's wrong. And, and they brought up the reasons why. Her ideal utopic world would involve taking away privacy, free will, the right to make these decisions. And it's like yeah, like it's brought up. It's like, uh, you're willing to take away our free will. Oh, you mean the free will that allows you to um, cause wars and strife and pain? And it's like, yeah, like none of that stuff is good. No one's like saying like war and pain and misery and death is good. But free will is important. And we have to make those decisions. The good means nothing if there is not bad to measure it against. This is this is excessively important. I feel like a lot of people need to understand this. The good means nothing without bad to measure it against. It isn't good without bad to measure it against. Good and bad are necessary for balance. You need to have both. And taking away free will, making people act according to a singular view on what is good, is just not going to work. And what's the Iliotrope goddess going to do when this when this entire thing fails, when this entire thing crumbles? And in the first place, we see what happens here. She tries to, I guess you could say, argue with them that what she's doing is for their good. And they're just like, you know, bringing up the fucking truth to her and telling her that this is not a good thing. And, and you know what she does? She's like, I'm just trying to do what's good and, and cries and runs away. I mean, there was a point there where I was thinking like she was actually going to kill the one queen. Um, not out of anger or anything, but because she felt like she would feel like the queen was an act of danger to, you know, good. But luckily that didn't happen. But I also feel like it couldn't have happened at this point. Thinking about it, it's too early for something like that. If... If something like that does happen, it can't happen at this time. 
because Yugo needs to believe in her at this point. You for for this entire story to work, Yugo has to trust in her completely until near the end of the season. Once once he realizes how bad this is and breaks away from her, that's going to be a turning point of the season and that can't happen this early. So, yeah. This needed to go the way it went. And the thing is, like, even when or if that would happen, like I said, the goddess wouldn't be doing that out of any ill will and would probably be very upset herself about the about her presumed need to do that. But I could see it happening. A sort of for the greater good idea. And that's kind of how the Iliotrope goddess comes across to me. Like kind of the epitome of the line for the greater good. Again, she truly believes that what she's doing is for the better of all of the world of Twelve. She's trying to help. Her intentions are pure. Pretty much as pure as you can get. But it's not about the intentions. It's about the execution of those intentions. And interestingly enough, this episode started off with a sort of like musical scene that caught me extremely off guard. And um, it seemed like it was telling like kind of the backstory of what happened. I'm going to mute this and go back into this. Let, let me try to see if I can piece this together a little bit. Uh, I'm muting it for copyright reasons so you guys won't hear anything or see anything, but I, I want to try to go through this real quick. Let me get past the opening here. So yeah, we see the other gods and everything... We see her there, she's floating around, kind of seeming disinterested in their entire stuff. She creates the Dofus at the World of Twelve. We see, like, all of the different um, uh, Eliotropes and dragons, including Hugo and Adamai. And that's when the other gods and goddesses, it looks like they start attacking her. It's not fully clear, like, what the story is here. But she ends up getting trapped and bound with chains. And then these, like, titan-like creatures end up entrapping her until a, a, a shooting star seems to come in. And I'm assuming that's maybe uh, Nora. Because it mentioned that Nora was the one who found her. So maybe that's Nora coming in and helping set her free and everything. And that leads into the current day. So yeah, that's definitely the backstory of what happened, but we we don't get an understanding of exactly what it was because the way it's told is in like this musical form. Also, was the song in English? Because there was no subtitles, and I swear I was recognizing a lot of the a lot of the words that were being said during it. I think the song was entirely in English. Um but yeah, so it's like we get a feel for what happened, but not like the full story. I almost kind of feel like this is a biased viewpoint. Like, I'm assuming this is what Hugo was seeing while inside of his mother's hair. I assume this was like her telling him the story of what happened. So it's from a biased viewpoint. Kind of what I'm getting from it, again, is like I said, she seemed disinterested in the machinations of the other gods and goddesses. She created the Dofus and, by extension, the Iliotropes and Dragons, and maybe that is what set off the other gods and goddesses. They didn't like that. So they uh, confronted and attacked her probably did not go the way that she's making it come across but eventually they had to trap her in like i guess another dimension 
And again, that's when Nora found and helped set her free and everything. So it's really interesting and it really raises a lot of questions. Um, I don't know if what I'm thinking here is completely correct. I don't know like what the truth of it all is. Um, it, it was said in a previous reaction, I think I mentioned this last time, that um, if you uh, have played like all the games and like have seen the other media and stuff uh, based on this, this world, this universe, then you already know what the deal to this all is. But I, like I like I said before, I haven't. I haven't played all the games. I haven't, like, learned all the lore from this uh, other, the, uh, the other media for this universe. So most of my knowledge comes from specifically the Wakfu series. <laughs> um, but I, I, I am interested. Is this supposed to be the full reveal or is there going to be more later on, I wonder? Um, obviously, if there is more information later on, do not tell me if my thoughts on this are correct or not. Um, I, I'm only going based off what I got here, and if there is, if they are going to go into this more later on, I do want to experience that for myself when it comes. But, yeah, I'm very curious. Very curious. Because this raises a lot of questions. And this episode was another fantastic episode, by the way. Like, just ignoring, like, everything I was just, like, specifically mentioning. Just, like, all of it together worked so well. It came, it, it, it came across excellently after the first three episodes. Everything is building on itself very, like, just extremely well. And it's just super high quality. Like, maybe it's just because it had been six and a half years since season three. Maybe it's just because I've been starved for more Wakfu. But this is kind of like, I think, the most invested I've been in this series. Like, I genuinely think I'm more invested in this right now than I was in season three or two or one. Any of the specials. I think I, I I think this is just like this six and a half year wait was so worth it. The quality is there, <laughs> and again, everything that they're adding in now, even on episode four, adding in these zombie creatures, it's like this is just fucking awesome. It's like just it's it's cool. It's the rule of cool. Sometimes you just add things in because it's fucking awesome, <laughs> and it's like I'm all for that terrifying zombie creatures out of nowhere i'm sold give me more feed me on comma feed me <laughs> i'm loving it clearly I i'm very into this um but yeah so i i'm excited for more obviously <laughs> and uh just as a reminder um because obviously this is like on Monday. I don't think I mentioned that before now, uh, funny enough. But yeah, obviously you're seeing this on Monday instead of the normal day. Um, that's all because of uh, the fact that we're taking a break this week, uh, starting tomorrow and going into Sunday um, for spring break. It's just a spring break week. We're taking off to refresh and everything. But this is one of those shows I wanted to get to uh, before we did. So I decided, okay, we'll still do a few reactions on Monday just to lead us into the spring break. Satisfyingly, you know? And God, this was a great episode. I am so fucking happy that I did not wait. I'm, I'm, because I could have put off on Wack Fu until next week, until after we came back from the spring break. I am so happy this is one of the three shows I decided to do um, for for today before we went on break. Because, my God, that is a great episode to go into the break on. And it just excites me even more for what's to come when we come back from the break next week. Um, but yeah, tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.